We are clocking about 20 thousandths of movement here. What might you ask are we clocking? We are measuring. Ta-da! The slop, the vertical play on an FAL rifle. I've got a dial test indicator on there. A magnetic base stuck on the receiver. And I'm measuring the play between the receiver and the trigger housing group. And that play is due to an ill-fitting frame lock. All right, here's the assembled rifle. You can see a noticeable amount of up and down play. Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. If your FAL rifle has as much play as this one does, you have a problem, or your rifle has a problem. Fortunately, we have a solution. It's called an oversized frame lock, and it's a part of this, this firearm that keeps the, the upper receiver and the trigger housing group locked together in the back end. When this is closed, the frame lock, which you really can't see inside of here, uh, meshes on top of this lug on the bottom of the receiver and is supposed to hold it tight, similar to a brake action shotgun. Uh, unfortunately, given uh, tolerant stack-ups of manufacturers from these things made worldwide over the last 50 to 70 years, uh, there's going to be times where the standard size frame lock just doesn't cut it and we've got this play. As you saw in the beginning of our video, with the dial indicator, this, this particular rifle has about 20 to 25 thousandths worth of play in it, which also translates into about 11 to 12 inches of vertical spread that you might see at 100 yards. Okay, let's take this rifle apart. We'll get down to the frame lock and we'll show you, show you how to remove it and help explain its function in this rifle and holding it together. If you haven't done this before and you get to this point, I just removed the butt stock, just a, a slotted screwdriver. Now you've got to take the, the butt stock off and there's a two recoil tube in here with a spring that's actually about this long when it's, it's, so it's under a lot of compression. And you need to trap that. Uh, if you go to ArizonaResponseSystems.com and uh, check out what their, their product line. They make a really, really awesome buttstock tool uh, wrench for doing this job. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have one of those, uh, but I, I'm gonna accomplish the same thing. I'm gonna start by unscrewing the retaining nut a couple of turns. I'm gonna use a 22 caliber cleaning rod, and I'm just gonna Crank this thing out of here. It's probably six or eight turns that it takes to get that nut out of there. It's, when it comes out, it's going to be under some te tension, so you got to be careful. Otherwise, you'll launch the parts halfway across the room. Someday I'll tell you the story about. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you that story right now. Okay, there's the recoil spring. You should have a nut and a washer, two springs inside of one another, and a little plunger on the other end. We'll set that aside for now. We've got one screw on the bottom we have to take out of the stock. And this slides apart. Now in the back here is the back end of that frame lock. Here's one that's been removed already. We're going to take that we're going to take it out of the trigger housing group. 
The next thing I need to do is take a small screwdriver and remove this pin out right there. I should probably have my readers in so I can actually see the screw slot. Okay, that pin keeps the takedown lever from falling out. Now we need to push this pin out. I have a little 1 16th diameter push pin here. I'll pop that out of there. And this again is under a little bit of spring tension. And after I get that pin out, I have the spring and another plunger that come out. That plunger rides in the recess of that pin and keeps it from walking out during the, upper, during the normal use. <clears throat> Once that's apart, we have nothing but the frame lock and the takedown lever together. Let's see if that's get a close up. Let's get a close up. You can see how they operate together. It's starting to rotate, it looks like. Anyway, now that once you've got the spring out, you just pull the takedown lever out. and the frame lock will slide out the back. And there we have it. Okay, here's a close-up of the back end of the FAL receiver. And this is the locking lug right here that the frame lock bears against to keep the rear end of the action tightly closed together. I'm going to Here's the frame lock, and during normal operation, this frame lock slides back and forth like this, and it locks together and holds it securely closed. Um, it's also should the design helps compensate for any wear because if. Uh, this mating surfaces or things where it just by design it's made to push in a little bit further and and uh, until to take up any any possible wear and take out the slack the problem happens is if uh, you don't you've got too much play in there and this frame light goes all the way forward and bottoms out and so you've got a situation maybe it's like that can't go farther any forward but you still have a gap between the bottom, between where the two mating surfaces are supposed to be. A couple telltale signs that you'll, that you'll see that uh, even with the, the takedown levers is if you have a horizontal takedown lever, lever that goes instead of locking up somewhere like there it goes all the way down to the limits of its travel or it's more obvious if you have a vertical one we stick one of those in back up a little bit here if your vertical takedown lever when your when your assembled rifle is closed together and it, it should be locked up and it should be somewhere a little bit shy of the, of the recoil plate. But if it buries itself all the way like that, you've got a, it's a sure sign that you're at the limit of your travel because the, the frame lock can't go any further forward because it's linked, mechanically linked to the takedown lever. And, uh, you know, it's another indication that you, you might be due for an oversized frame lock. I'm going to zoom in on a couple of drawings I have here that maybe help explain a little better about what's going on. Here's a drawing of the frame lock. You can see the frame lock as it meshes or, or fits against that locking lug on the rear end of the uh, FAL's receiver. And this is, uh, shows a good fit. We've got a decent amount of overlap here. And it's uh, really how it should look. Um, 
the total locking length of this surface on the lugs is about three millimeters or approximately, approximately one eighth of an inch. And you want at least sixty thousandths or one sixteenth of an inch of overlap here. If you get too small, you can actually, uh, the rifle can, can open up on you while you're firing it. Uh, sometimes this thing does reciprocate slightly under the recoiled impulse from shooting. And uh, you know, that's not a good thing. You don't want that to happen. So you want to have at least a minimum of sixty thousandths uh, or, or, or more up here. And uh, if you could crawl inside your rifle, this is what it would look like if it's set up pr correctly. Maybe throw a different one on here. Here's an example of what my rifle looked like when I first got it. Uh, the, the locking frame lock was going all the way forward and it was actually bottoming out somewhere up here. It wasn't touching on these two surfaces where it's supposed to be. Oh, another thing is when we talk about oversized frame locks, they are not longer. What they are is they're thicker on this surface right here. So on a, if you're buying a 10,000 sticker frame lock, oversized frame lock, it's, it's going to be this surface here is going to be 10,000 thicker than, than, than the nominal size or 20,000. It's not the length, it's the thickness here that, that really matters. All right, let's do a partial assembly of this rifle uh, with an oversized frame lock. I have a 10,000 oversized frame lock right here. We're going to stick it back in here and just see how much of that play that we can eliminate from this rifle. <clears throat> okay. We don't need to put the rest of the rifle apart, or put the rest of the rifle together in order to test to see if the oversized frame lock has done any, done what we want it to do. I'm going to put. Visually, I can't see any. I can't see any movement at all. It looks like it's fixed it. I'm going to put that dial indicator back on here and see if we can measure any play. All right, I'm really reefing on that action as best I can and trying to open it, trying to pry it closed, and I'm getting very, very little deflection on that. You know, maybe one thousandth, essentially nothing. It's doing what it's supposed to. It's locking up tight. Uh, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you found this video interesting. In the meantime, be safe, be responsible, have a great day.